All right, greetings everyone. Uh, purpose of this video is to give us a head start on some of the concepts from section 2.5. Now, since you're watching this video virtually and we're not able to be in class, I wanted to make sure you had your meme for the day. So I'll give you a second, here you, here you go. Go ahead and enjoy this. Okay. And so let's jump into it then. So. As I mentioned, this is uh, part of the stuff or part of the material that's in section 2.5. It's certainly not all of it. Uh, in fact, I would say that we're actually not going to cover everything that's in section 2.5 of our textbook. We're going to zero in on some specific types of problems. Um, but there's lots of good, cool physical applications of calculus in that section if you would like to check it out. So we're going to start by talking about work. And before I talk about what is here on the slide, just want to back up for a second and talk about what work is in general. So if you've taken a physics class before, you may have learned that work is given by force times distance. So it's more or less the um, kind of a measure of a force being exerted over a distance. And so as kind of an example of that, let's imagine that we have a box here at one end of a room. Let's say, let's say that the room is five meters or five feet across. Uh, actually, we'll say five meters for now. Okay. And we're gonna exert a force on this. Then we're gonna push the box across the room. Now again, force is over distance. So we could, you know, if we knew the distance, um, like the, if we exerted a constant force across the length of the room, let's say we were doing five Newtons over the course of the entire room, um, then our work calculation would be five Newtons times the distance, which is five meters. And so that would give us 25 Newtons meters. And I'll talk more about units of these in a second. So that's how that would work. But often the force that we're exerting over a distance is not a constant force. And so what might happen as we're pushing this box across the room is that maybe we start off with a strong force of like say five Newtons. But then we start to get tired as we're going along. So maybe then for a couple of meters, we're doing three Newtons. We're getting even more tired as we go across, and then maybe it's two Newtons. And then maybe by the end, we're so exhausted, we're barely pushing the box around along with a force of a single Newton. Okay, so notice that the, um, that the, the again, the, in this case, the, the amount of force is decreasing over time. And, you know, it might not have to work that way. It may be that, um, that the amount of force increases over time, maybe it increases and then decreases. And so we'd have to do kind of a different calculation to figure out the amount of work done in a case like this. So kind of the approach here, um, if we want to find the total work done, if we have a variable amount of force being exerted, kind of relates to what we've done to find an area under a curve where we take our interval or our distance here, we divide it into smaller intervals. We can look at the force exerted each over each of those intervals. So maybe I call this like F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 there if I'm using these five small intervals. And I could calculate the work for each individual interval, right? So I could do the, I'll call it work one for the first interval would be the force one times the distance, which in this case, I'm gonna call it a change in distance since it's the change in position from here to here. So I'm gonna call that Delta D in this case. Then I could do a similar calculation for the second force or uh, second interval. So the second amount of work there would be a force two over that distance times, or yeah, over that distance of so times the delta D there and so on and so forth, right? And so we see that we could go through, calculate each of those 
um, the amount of work for each of those sub intervals. And once we did that, at the end, we could add up all of the um, work calculations. So I'm gonna say sum from I equals one. Even though I used five intervals here, I'm gonna say N because we could have used more, we could have used fewer. And for each interval, we're doing this calculation F sub I, meaning the amount of force over that interval times delta D, which should be the change in the distance. And probably that would give us an approximation of the total amount of work done, right? Because it may happen that within each interval, right, the force is also variable over that interval, right? It might not be just that single constant force of F1 or something. So what we want to do to get this as accurate as possible, we would want to use the most amount of intervals of, of possible, which we know is an infinite number. So in that case, we take the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum. And from what we've seen throughout this quarter, we know that what that does is gives us an integral. So this has become an integral of force. I'm going to say f of x because we have a force function. Okay. And then our change in d, our change in distance, as we've seen before, will become more of like a dd. Um, but since it's a horizontal force we're looking at here, I can think of this as moving along the horizontal axis on a coordinate plane, which we would know would be the x-axis. So what our calculation for work here becomes is the integral of the force function um, dx, which is what we see in the top of the slide here. So the idea is that if we have a variable force given by the function f of x that's moving an object in a positive direction, meaning to the right along the x-axis from point A to B, then the work done on the object is given by this integral here. So the integral from A to B of the force function over that interval, okay? So what does that look like in, pro in uh, practice? Well, here we have a, uh, a problem where we're given the force in pounds. So notice now they're not using Newtons, they're using pounds. On a particle that's described by the function, this one. Uh, and any point T along the horizontal T axis. So here, rather than using the X axis, we're using the T axis. And they tell us those values are given in feet. And we need to find the work done in moving the particle from T equals three to T equals seven. So to do this, we just use our uh, formula from the previous side. So it's gonna be the integral from A to B of the force function. Uh, and actually I wrote F of X, I should use F of T since that's our input variable here. This be F of T DT. This has become the integral from three to seven of our force function, which is T squared minus cosine of three T plus two dt. Take the antiderivative here to evaluate this. This will become one third t cubed. You could use u substitution to do the um, integral or find the antiderivative of the middle function here. I'm gonna skip a few steps and just show us that that becomes minus one third times sine of three t. And then uh, the antiderivative of the two there at the end would be plus two T. We'll evaluate that from over our limits of integration, which are three to seven. And I'll let you plug that in the calculator. And it looks like we end up getting 113.1918 as the amount of work done in moving this particle along the T axis. Now the next question we might need to answer is what is the what are the units here? Well, notice that our force is given in units of pounds, our distance is given in units of feet, and remember we started talking about how work is equal to force. That'll let me write force times distance. Okay, that's supposed to say f times d. I'm not sure what that says. Let's try it here. Nope, that was not any better. All right, there we go. And so what we can do is take the units of the force, which are pounds, multiply them by the units of the distance, which are feet. And so our units here become pounds times feet or pounds feet, okay? Which I know sounds kind of silly, but that's the way it is. And thinking back to the example we did on the previous slide, we had the um, 
the units that were newtons times meters, which is what is often used in um, the metric system. And another way to write that is joules. Okay, so if we were doing this in metrics, uh, in the metric system, we'd have newtons times meters or joules. Here, doing it in um, the imperial system, our system, we get pounds times feet. So in this case, the amount of work done is 113.198 pounds feet or pounds times feet. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.